Well, um, Johanna, thank you very much for seeing me. First of all, I would like you to introduce yourself. My name is Johanna Svanike and I was born here in Ghana and I'm Ghana's um, past ambassador to France and UNESCO. And during my time at UNESCO, I became intensely passionate and interested in heritage and culture. Um, and so on my return to Ghana, I founded the Heritage and Cultural Society of Africa. And um, some of the concerns of this organization were the fact that uh, Ghana has um, one of the largest listings of World Heritage Sites. Um, under one listing, all the slaves, uh, sl the forts and castles associated with the slave trade are listed, um, up to almost 28 forts and castles in one listing. And it was a concern of mine that um, some of these forts and castles are not very well known and are not very well cared for. And that uh, the Heritage and Cultural Society of Africa would work to bring awareness of this problem and try and advocate for um, preservation of these forts and castles associated with the slave trade um, with the help, with international help, because not one nation can be responsible for maintaining this world heritage. Hmm. So, if you take a look at what are the possibilities for interacting with the European, the African and the American, the, the slave trade, the triangle uh, trade, why is it important and what can we do? It's very, very important that um, people learn from history and the only way they can learn from history is if we preserve the history. So um, the legacy and heritage based in Ghana, which are the physical evidence of the transatlantic slave trade, these are heritage for the world, not just for Ghana. And in fact, the largest stakeholders are Africans in the diaspora, um, whose forebears were enslaved and taken to the Caribbean and to the United States of America and to South America. So Ghana just finds itself in a unique position of being responsible for these sites. But um, these are World Heritage sites. And what um, HAXA would like to do is to develop programs to bring people who are interested and who are connected with this history together. Because I feel that um, the, um, the pain and suffering which was caused by the transatlantic slave trade is something which has been passed on to, from generation to generation. And it's by bringing back um, the generations together to talk and heal that we can overcome what happened and maybe get something good out of it. So for example, um, there's the story of an enslaved man um, who was, he was called Venture Smith, he, who was taken to Connecticut as a, a slave. And his family have returned to Ghana and gone to Anomabu Castle, where he left from. And for them, it was a life-changing experience. And they plan to come to Ghana again. So I'm keen to form these links. Um, so in the case of Denmark, uh, people were taken from Ghana from the Osu Christiansburg Castle and from the Fort Friedensburg in Ningo, where my father happens to come from, um, to the Danish Antilles, which are today the US Virgin Islands. And uh, specifically, it has been identified that many of such people came from Akwamu. And uh, so I have been to Akwamu to speak to Odinehu, the chief of Akwamu, about this uh, heritage and this history and 
I have tried to work with the traditional council to create a UNESCO slave root site, which incorporates the Osu Christiansborg Castle, um, some of the remaining few homes of the Danes uh, in Osu, like Wolf, Joseph Wolf, his house is still intact. From there to the Shy Hills, uh, where we have caves, where people would run if uh, there were slave raids. And then to Akwamufie, a place where they have the keys, of the original keys of the Danish castle, um, because they overcame uh, the Danes and took over the castle for a short period. And I know you know a history about the Svenike family. Can you tell me something about this? Yes. So, um, as you know, the Danish families in Osu still exist, and many of them intermarried. And um, so, my, I'm not originally from Osu. I'm uh, from Somania. Uh, and like I said, my grandfather from Ningo, but I'm married to somebody who comes from Usu. And uh, so his name, Savanikia, is a Danish name. And uh, so from uh, my research, I discovered that uh, a man, Niels Nielsen, uh, had a son, Thomas Nielsen, who changed his name to Thomas Savanikia. Uh, when he moved uh, as a, um, a religious um, pastor or rector to a place called Savanikia, and his son became a ship's chandler, who is the person who f stocks the ship with everything it needs before it set off from the harbor to to go to Africa, and. Uh, this ship's chandler then had a son who sailed to what was regarded as the Danish Guinea uh, to, to start a new life at the age of 18. So his name was Hans Christian Savanikia. He was a merchant. Um, he was most likely involved in the slave trade. And um, at one point in time, he was governor in the Christiansburg Castle because often the civil servants or the officers sent from Copenhagen might die um, very soon after arrival. So some of the Danish merchants who were established and uh, married to local Ghanaians um, would stand in until a new governor could be sent from Copenhagen. And therefore um, Hans Christian Svanikia is known to have been a temporary governor at Christiansborg. Um, the Svanikia family intermarried with other known Danish families, including the Richter family and the Malm family. Can you talk about other sites that would be interesting to know about <clears throat> here at the coast of uh, uh, Ghana? Absolutely. Um, the coast of Ghana is dotted with many forts and castles, um, and I discover new ones every day. There was Fort Friedensburg, where um, the Danes had uh, ships going out to... Um, uh, West Indian Islands? Yes, which was the US. Okay, so the Danes sold their <coughs> islands to the US, and so those islands are St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, as the um, Americans pronounce it. And those make up the U.S. Virgin Islands. And it is documented that a lot of uh, those on, on the island came from Ghana, and specifically from Akwamufi. Um, and of course, we have also Christian's Ball Castle, which was the seat of government here in, in, in Accra for many years, and is now been declared this year as a museum, a national museum. Um, but you also have forts in the western region. Um, you have forts in Aksim. Um, you have forts in Anumabu. You have Elmina, which is very well known. 
you have Cape Coast, which is also very well known. And the Danes had Fort Princeton Steam, mm -hmm. I think it's called, in Kita as well. Um, and actually, I, I keep on f discovering new forts. Yeah. So, to end up, what should we learn from all this? Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of it? Yes. Um, so, to tell you the truth, the Heritage and Cultural Society of Africa um, is not, does not limit itself uh, to um, historical heritage. We also work with contemporary culture and heritage. Um, so our biggest ambition is to create a museum, a museum of photography and a museum of film and a museum of documents, um, archives. Um, there are, uh, there's a lot of information about the history I just told you in archives in Denmark, but not here in Ghana. There are photographs of the descendants um, of um, the Danes, and you know we, we focus on, on Danes because you know my husband derives from that Danish line, and you are from Denmark. But you can talk about Portuguese, you can talk about Dutch, you can talk about British, um, and. Ghana is a very young nation, so a lot of our history is actually documented in film and photography, and we are very, very keen to have that accessible to Ghanaians, um, so that Ghanaians don't have to go to Denmark or to the British Museum to see their history, and that they can bring it here to Ghana, even if in our challenge is the weather. And therefore, um, now with digitization, it uh, helps to preserve these uh, documents even in spite of the hot weather. And so it would be very, very useful to have all these different things digitized and housed here in Ghana for the education of the Ghanaian people. In the end, um, a people need to know their identity and where they come from and what their history was. To have that self-confidence to develop. We are a new nation, 60 years old, that's very young. And it's through knowing our history and our past that we know who we are and we have that self-confidence to develop. I think one of the important things about paying more attention to heritage and culture, is also migration. A lot of Africans migrate at huge cost, sometimes their lives, not knowing where they are going and what they are going to meet, because they have been told where they are is not good, where they are is bad, and it's not true. Africa is a wonderful place, Ghana is a wonderful place, and we need to have self-confidence, believe in ourselves, and develop our countries um, for ourselves. Mm. And I think uh, respecting, valuing, and promoting heritage and culture can achieve this. The presence is the key to the past, and the past is always present. Is that one of the things that you're working on? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, one area we want to develop is heritage tourism. Now, heritage tourism is so important for so many reasons. And one of them is jobs, jobs for the youth in Ghana, uh, revenue for the government of Ghana. Um, we can't afford to ignore tourism in Ghana when Western states are so preoccupied. If you, if you hear there was a disaster, they'll tell you how many billions they've lost from lost tourism. It means that they take tourism very seriously. We have everything you need for tourism in Ghana. Friendly people, beautiful weather, amazing sights, and culture which you, world-class culture, you, you, you really find living culture in Ghana. We have festivals, we have uh, fashion, we have music, you name it, we have it. 
and uh, so it is really really important that we start to leverage these things in modern times for modern issues and modern problems. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.